So, hello and welcome to this lesson on the Cremes rule for solving systems of equations. Okay, so we have several methods that you can use to solve systems of linear equations. We have direct methods and we have iterative methods. And some of the direct methods are using the Gaussian elimination with partial scaling or without scaling and what have you. Then we have iterative methods for doing that. So with those ones too, we have several of them. So in this video, we will talk about the Cremes rule. No one is very, very simple. Okay. All right. So let's consider the system of linear equations below. So we are just illustrating this concept with a three by three matrix. But know that you can extend it to four by four, five by five, and you can also apply it to a two by two matrix. Okay. So consider the system of linear equations below. Okay. So in matrix form, we will have something like this. So in the matrix form, we have something like this. I hope you've seen that. Where this thing here will be A, the coefficient matrix, and this will be our unknowns, the XYZ that we are finding for. And this will be our constant, right? And it's a column vector. So we'll have something of this form. Because we are saying let this coefficient matrix be A, this be X, and this be B. So we have something like this. So when you have something like this, there is a rule which has to be satisfied before we can use the Cremes rule. And the rule is that the determinants of A should be non-zero. So the determinants of this A here should be non-zero. If it is zero, then it means we can apply the Cremes rule. So if the determinant of E is non-zero, if the condition is satisfied, then to find our X, okay, note that um, this is the system we are solving. So to find our X, this is what we do. We do something interesting here. So you see, we will take the first part of this so we take this column right so we take the first column a11 a21 a31 and we place it with b1 b2 b3 to have this so we'll find the determinant of that and we we'll divide it by the determinant of what a itself so that's the reason why a has to be um non-singular because if the determinant of e is zero we can't do this right so that's how we find for x so to find for y this time around we will take the second column and replace it with b1 b2 and b3 and we always divide you by the determinant of a so i hope you can see that here so that's how you find for y and to find for z we come here and we take the third column away and replace it with what? Our constant B. And we have this all over the determinant of A. So that's how we do it. It's very simple. So let's solve some two examples with it. Okay. And you realize it's so simple. So example, use the Cremes rule to solve the following system of linear equations. So the first one we have x1 plus 2x2 equals 7. Then we have 2x1 minus x2 equals 4. Then with the third, with the second question, we have x1 equals 1. 5 over 6x2 minus 1 over 2x3 equals 1. We have minus 1 over 3x2 plus 5 over 6x3 equals 1. So let's take the first question. So in matrix form, we have something like this, right? And A here 
the coefficient matrix. So the first thing we have to do is to find the determinant of E. If it is zero, that means we can use the equivalent rule. But if it is non-zero, that means we can go ahead and use our rule. So find the determinant of E will be one times minus one, then minus two times two, which will give us negative five. So that means to find x1, so we take the first column here and replace it with what this. So we have the determinant of 7 for 2 minus 1 all over determinant of what e, which is minus 5. I hope you get that. So when you find the determinant of this, you will get 7 times minus 1, then minus 4 times 2. And this will give you negative 15 over negative 5, and that will give you 3. So that means x1 is 3. You know, to find x2, you take, you come here, the second column, and you replace it with what? 7, 4. So you can see that here. And you find the determinant of it, and you divide by negative 5, which is the determinant of our coefficient matrix. And this thing will give you min minus 10 over minus 5, which will give you 2. So that means x1 is 3, x2 is 2. You see, it's very simple to use the Kuhlman's rule to do to solve system of linear equations. Let's take the second example. So in the second example, we have three systems, right? We have three equations. So we have three by three matrices. So in matrix form, we have something like this: 1, 0, 0, 0, 5 over 6 minus 1 over 12, 0 minus 1 over 3, 5 over 6, x1, x2, x3, and 1, 1, 1. So these are coefficient matrix. So you have to find the determinant of it and see whether it is non-zero. Because it's only when it is non-zero that we can go ahead and use our Kramer's rule formula. So find the determinant of it, it will give us 2 over 3. That means that, yeah, the condition is satisfied. So we can go ahead. So to find x1, we take the first column and replace it with what? 1, 1, 1. That is the B. So you can see that here. And you find the determinant of it. And that will give us 2 by 3, 2 by 3, giving us 1. So that means x1 is 1. So to find x2, it's the same thing, just that you maintain everything but you will replace so you maintain your e just that in the second column you replace it with your b right this is your b so that will give us this so the determinant of that is 11 over 12 you divide you by the determinant of e 2 over 3 and that gives us 11 over 8 and you know we do the same thing just that in s3 it is the third column we are going to touch, right? So we do that. And that gives us 7 over 4. So that means solving the system x1 is 1, x2 is 11 over 8, and x3 is 7 over 4. You see, it's very, very simple, the equivalent rule. And you apply that a lot in your integral equation course and in your algebra. Okay, so thank you very much. So in our next video, we will talk about numerical, numerical quadrature. Okay, so how to use numerical integrations to solve integral equations, particularly the Fred Holmes integral equation. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.